Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Tech Classes. This video is a part of data analysis using Python playlist. And in this, we are learning the pandas. This is the part 2 of the pandas tutorial. So, in the first video, we have seen how we can create the series and the data frame using pandas. In this video, we will see how we can use pandas different basic functionalities on the real-time data set. Now, real-time data set can be in the form of CSV file or the Excel file. This is the two basic form of the data sets, CSV files and the Excel files. So let's see how we can load those files into the notebook because before performing any kind of analysis, we should first load the data set into the file, notebook file. So I will write here PD dot. Now, whenever you want to call any function, just like we have done in the first video, that is PD dot series, PD dot data frame. Now, dot is something you can call. You can call the function using the dot. So, PD dot and then the function name. Now, if you want to read the Excel file, then you can write Excel. If you want to read the CSV file, then you can write read CSV. And then parenthesis. Now, in this parenthesis, you can pass the path of the file. But if the file is present in the same directory where your notebook is located, then you can directly pass the name of the file. For example, if I show you here, this is the Excel file and this is the CSV file that we are going to use in this video. So these two files are present in the same directory in which I have the notebook. So I just copy the name of the file and then pass in the strings. But if it is present in somewhere other location, then you have to pass the path of the file. If I show you, this is the headline Excel file that we are going to use in the notebook. So we have to first load this file and convert into a data frame because the data is present in the form of rows and columns. And this is the CSV file. Now if you see in this CSV file, there are so many unnecessary rows present at the starting of the data. And the actual data is started from this 48 row. So we will also see how we can handle these kind of data sets. So this function will convert this Excel file into a data frame. So I will just save this into a variable called df. Now if I run this, then it will take some time because the file is huge because it contains around I think 2 lakh rows. You can see this is the data frame. So the Excel file is loaded into the data frame. Now here we have the column name as unnamed zero. It means there is no header or column name present for this particular column. And you can also see into this Excel file there is no column name present here. So that is how you can load the Excel file into the data frame. Now let's see how we can use the CSV file. So pd.read CSV and then I will pass the name of the CSV file. So copy and then paste. So this is dfcsv and then dfcsv, let's print this. So if I run this, then it will return me an error. Parser error. If you see here, it's says error tokenizing the data. What it means, it is because of those unwanted rows, these unwanted rows, unnecessary rows. So we have to skip the rows from 1 to 47 because from 48, we have the original table present in the CSV file. So there is a parameter in the function read CSV called skip rows. So we can skip the rows. So skip rows. And how many rows you want to skip from starting? That is 47. So you can just skip. And if you just run this, then you can see the original data is started from 48. So the first one, first line will be treated as a column name. And from the second line, it will be the data. And it will convert into the data. That is how you can load the CSV files and the Excel file into the notebook using the read CSV and read Excel function. Now, after loading the data set, what an analyst will do? 
you should first check the data so we have just printed this data frame like this but there is a function called head and tail to see the starting rows of the data frame and the last rows of the data frame if i just mention here head and tail function now head and tail function what it will do it will head function the name suggest it will return the top rows and the tail function the name suggest it will return the last rows so if i run df dot head now earlier we have using pd dot read csv pd dot read excel but here what we will do is df dot head function because head function tail function and other function that we are going to use will be for the data frame so we can use the df dot and then head so we are calling the function from the data frame so df dot head and if i don't pass anything it will return the top five rows so from zero to four the indexing starts from zero until four so we have returned the five rows using the head function if i use df dot tail then it will return me in the last five rows this is a function so it contains it takes any parameter so parameter will be the number of rows you want to return the default value is five if you do not pass anything then it will return five rows if you pass any number for example i will pass 12 so it will return now the 12 rows you can see the last index is 11 so it will return the 12 rows similarly for the tail function also if i run df dot tail df dot tail and then any number for example 7 then it will return 7 rows 7 last row that is all for the head and tail function whenever you are doing the exploratory data analysis we will see these terms and these things how we can start with how we can go ahead when we do projects and all so for starting we do head and tail function we use head and tail function to showcase what our data contains that is the head and tail function let's see the another function suppose you want to check how many rows and columns the data frame contains your data contains then there is a function called shape it will return first the number of rows and the number of columns this is the shape if you want to see the size of the data frame then if you multiply these two the rows and the columns then the value return is it is by the df dot size what if you want to see the name of the columns so df dot columns will return the name of the columns the data frame contains so you can see here we have the first column that is unnamed then category headline authors link short description and the date we can also check this with the another one this is for the columns you can see the name of the columns returned in the form of the list what if you want to see what is the range of sorry what is the index of the data so df dot index it will return you the index you can also change the column names because it is returning the list so if you pass another list in which these have the alternative names then you can change the column names also so that is the direct way there is also a function for rename to rename the columns that we will see in another video. So df dot index, so you can see the index is the range index that it starts from zero and stop till two lakh eight hundred fifty three rows. So there are around two lakh rows in our data set. If I see the another one, another data frame index it contains only 2494 rows and the step is 1 means it is starting from 0 1 2 like that that is the index function there is a function called df dot d type that will return the data type of the data frame so that is d types i have written d type so df dot d types will return the data type of all the columns present in the data frame so if you see here category headline these all are of the object data type 
or you can say these are the categorical data and the first one is the integer now if i run this function on the second one second data frame then d types then you can see we have year month and day in the integer format decimal and average in the float format and then n days in the integer format and the last three columns in the float format that is the data types of the columns that is how you can see the data types of the columns now if you want to see missing values present in the data for example if your data frame does not contain a value for a particular row and a column then that is called as a missing value and that is represented by an a n in the data frame so if you want to check missing values then there is a function called is null so df dot is null will return you the data frame with false false values where the, there is a data but it will return true where there is not a data if you see here true is written in the authors column and if you see here nan then it means there is no data present for the authors in the category tech and whatever the headline is so we don't have any value here so it is represented by nan means we don't have any value of the author so it is returned true but what if you want to check the sum of the missing values in particular column so what you can do is you can write df dot is null and then dot sum then it will return the total number of missing values in the data set if you see the first two columns does not contain any missing value headline contains six missing value means six rows in the headline column does not contain any headlines authors have a lot of missing values that is 36000 around short description also has 19000 missing values so how we can handle these kind of missing values how we can clean the data set we will see in another video when we will talk about the data cleaning because every time we get the data it is not possible that we get the clean data so we have to clean the data set before performing any kind of analysis so this is the df dot is null and then dot sum function these are some of the basic functionalities that we use when we start any kind of analysis project and for the other functionalities for the other basic functionalities as we move ahead in the videos in the tutorial then whenever the function will come i will try to explain that whatever the function is for example there are so many functions like unique and value counts describe info and other kind of functions so just like we move ahead i will explain all the functionalities this is just the basic introduction of how you can use the basic functionalities when you are starting any kind of project Thank you.